Hi, this is Ms. Sherbin going over Lesson 22, Geological Evidence, and this is the guidance instruction portion. Um, it's found on page 115. Please remember you may pause at any time and rewind if you need to. So, uh, the I can statement for this lesson is, you can learn how sedimentary rocks form and how some species change rapidly over time. So we're talking about a certain type of rock, which we'll get to the vocabulary of, how it's made or formed, and we're talking about how some species are rapidly changing, how they quickly change. Um, so for example, we have changed over time. Um, and I mean we, we mean Homo sapiens. We were not, this is a Homo sapiens. These are not Homo sapiens. We um, have a common ancestor with all of these different species and it happened slowly. We were not rapidly changing. Things like bacteria or insects, things that have really short lifespans can change rapidly over time or they can evolve. All right, so that brings us to vocabulary. Sedimentary rocks form when layers of sediment are pressed together and hardened into rock by the weight of the layers above. So let's watch a very quick video just to understand what sediment is. So this is a quick um, portion of a Make Me Genius video called Sedimentary Rocks. The word sedimentary means made from sediments, which is material that settles to the bottom of a liquid. Oh, very good. You are carrying a few stones and a glass of water. Put these stones in the glass. See these settle down? This settled down material is called sediment. It is a perfect example of how sedimentary rocks are formed. Let's understand more. Sedimentary rocks are formed by layers of sediment. Sediment is comprised of small parts of rocks, as well as dead animals or plants, which have been eroded by strong winds and a strong flow of water in rivers and glaciers. So they're saying that little pieces of, um, of rocks, dead animals, other material are then um, created and then they are compressed and they make the um, sedimentary rock. All right. That brings us to the next word. To evolve is to change gradually over time. So here is, I thought was a helpful picture. Um, right here we see a gradual evolution of a, let's say an insect at this point. Just let's go with that. <laughs> um, and we see it just starts off something basic and then through genetic mutations and through sexual reproduction or um, what have you, we have different traits passed on through natural selection. And here are different sedimentary rocks. And we find the oldest is on the bottom as it goes up. So let's get into that and now into the directions. Read the following information. Small particles of clay, dirt, and sand are broken off existing rocks by rain, heat, wind, and ice. These particles may be carried by streams and rivers into ponds, lakes, and oceans where they settle to the bottom. The settled particles are called sediments. The remains of dead organisms may be trapped in the sediments. Over many thousands of years, sediments are pressed together and hardened forming sedimentary rocks that preserve these remains as fossils. So I found this portion very helpful. Over thousands of years, sediments are pressed together and hardened, forming sedimentary rocks to preserve these remains as fossils. And here's some fossils of something that possibly you're talking about. Um, maybe some dead uh, sea organisms, as you can see here, were preserved. I just wanted to show you that picture, give you a fossil idea. All right, on with the next portion of our reading. As more sediments settle and harden, layers of sedimentary rock are formed. A cross-section of sedimentary rock has many layers. Before I continue reading, I just wanted to show you what a cross-section was. So for example, if this was the whole, this tomato, this would be a cross-section. And they're talking about many layers. You probably have seen lots of pictures like this, or maybe you've even gone. And these are layers and layers and layers of rock and they go down millions and millions of years. 
You can even go to Central Park and see some of the strata or the rock layers. Um, they won't be as old as some of these in this picture, but you can see um, evidence of what they're talking about. Okay, so I'm going to start from this paragraph again. As more sediments settle and harden, layers of sedimentary rock form. A cross-section of sedimentary rock has many layers. This picture here. These layers may be formed by different kinds of sediments and may look slightly different. The bottom layer of sedimentary rock, along with its fossils, is the oldest. The top layer is the youngest. The fossil in this layer are the youngest fossils. So they said at the bottom, it's the oldest. And at the top, it's the youngest. That's because it falls to it. So here are the oldest fossils. This one's older than this fossil. This fossil is the youngest. This second layer, these three fossils, are older than this fossil up here, but still younger than the fossils below it. If scientists began digging down through layers, the fossils found would take them gradually backward in time. The fossils in the top layer would be most like organisms alive today. The fossils at the bottom layer would be the most different from those alive today. So back to this picture again. Here are the oldest fossils and here are the youngest. So the ones that would be alive today would most likely resemble this organism than this one. Okay, on to the next page. Most species change very slowly over time to adapt to changing environments. The first birds appeared about 200 million years ago. Those birds evolved or changed over many generations. And the result is the birds we know today. Some species change more rapidly. They change quickly because they have very short lifespans. Bacteria generally live anywhere from a few days to a few weeks. The common housefly lives about 17 days. A monarch butterfly lives a little more than a year. Species of these organisms will change much more quickly than species of larger organisms that live much longer. So what I thought was important was I found evolved or changed many durations. So I found my vocabulary word and it redefined it for me. But I also found interesting was this paragraph mostly talked about how different back, um, that some species change more rapidly because they have short lifespans. Um, this is very different than what we were just talking about the fossils. To me, it seems like this writing, they did two different things. They talked about how fossils are formed and how that's evidence. And they talked about how some things evolve at different times. Um, I don't know if I would have done it together, but they did. So the first part on this page was discussing how there's fossils and how they're made in different types. So let's go over to those questions. How does sedimentary rock form? So we got this over here, we found it. Over many thousands of years, sediments are passed together and hardened, forming sedimentary rock that preserves the remains of fossils. So what I found was small particles of earth materials are compacted by layers above them. So compacted means like pressed together. How can scientists compare the ages of layers of sedimentary rock? So if you remember this picture right here with um, the rock, we know that the oldest are on the bottom, so we know that this layer down here is much older than the layer up here, and the same up here. So um, you can simply write something like the upper layers are younger, the bottom layers are older, for example. So that's how we know. There's also other ways where we can use carbon dating, but just by layering, we can figure it out. All right, and then back to what we thought, what seemed like the um, second portion of our reading was um, this part where they talked about how different species evolve at different rates. So what happened to the, an organism that has evolved? So like right here, we saw that this organism changed gradually over time, and this hominids um, also changed gradually over time. They're different species, of course. Um, so we find that organisms change slowly over many generations. 
Um, and the key is if it evolves faster, it's because it has more generations quickly. So you have to wait for generations and generations to happen before you evolve, before, not you, but your species evolves. And it has to happen over many generations. So let's talk about um, bacteria for a second, because I think there's a lot more here that we need to discuss, and it'll help you out with your questions coming up. So this video can be found at this link, and it's by Mark Drollinger, and it's about bacteria growth. Um, just notice how he talks about how quickly they reproduce and what mutations play into it. Um, it'll be very helpful for your upcoming questions. Bacteria growth. Bacteria are those one-celled prokaryotic organisms that live almost everywhere, including in your digestive tract. What we have here is a pathogen, or a bad bacteria, and it's multiplying. Bacteria reproduce asexually, and some multiply at an alarming rate. Bacteria grow exponentially, and some double every 20 minutes. If we examine the graph, we see that after just 160 minutes, what started as one bacteria has become 256 genetically identical cells. However, sometimes a mutation occurs. A mutation is a change in a gene or a chromosome. Mutations can be beneficial to bacteria. An antibiotic can be prescribed that could kill a colony of bacteria. Our mutated cell might survive the antibiotic and the process of bacteria growth would start all over again. Bacteria growth. So in that video he was talking about how some bacteria become resistant um, to antibiotics and how quickly the bacteria change over time which is what they were alluding to in the previous paragraph we're reading. Now, here's the the vocabulary to help you out with your next um, round. So, your next questions, I mean. So, number six asks about high mountain slopes. Here is a slope of a mountain. It think about the slope of a line on a graph, and they're talking about the top or the high part of the mountain slope. Um, number seven through ten, they're talking about antibiotics which is a medicine they use to kill bacteria. You may have taken it sometime when you're sick. Resistance, ability of bacteria and other microorganisms to resist the effects of an antibiotic to which they are once sensitive. So not talking about in that bacteria's lifetime, they're talking about mutations just like that video of the next generation of bacteria. And tuberculosis is a type of bacteria that can get you very sick and you actually get a vaccine for it. Number 15, formation. What they mean by formation is the creation or development. An insecticide is something that kills insects, like raid. All right, if you have any questions, please let me know. But before I do sign up, please like this video so I know that you guys are watching them and that they were helpful. Thanks.